Headlines brought to you by Now available in the new look of the Radiant Hair Relaxer with herbal extracts and no base formula. Radiant, look good, feel great. I would like to see Parliament cut to the number of, let's say, half of what it is now. Political parties call for more training of members of parliament to enhance performance in committees and quality of debate. Training of the chairpersons, training of the members of parliament. community service. Medical practitioners gang up against controversial Uganda Medical Association President Dr. Olendo. For us as doctors, is not representative of us. Multi-million government projects abandoned in Busia district accused of privatizing projects meant to support farmers. Two years it is not working because of electricity. The Gura option was the best option. One of the original 27 NRA fighters says Gorilla War was a better option. And it saved lives and it opened the eyes of Uganda. The headlines brought to you by now available in the new look of the radiant hair relaxer with herbal extracts and no base formula radiant look good feel great a very good evening and thank you so much for joining us to this edition of nbs live at nine i'm samson kasumba and i have the company of uh, Michael Jagwe, who is on sign language. And I do remind you to um, uh, get some time and go to www.nowpost.co.ug for some of the stories that we run here and those that may not make their way here. Let's begin the bulletin with political parties that have asked the parliament leadership to intensify training of members of parliament on how to conduct business in committees so that they can deliver to expectations. This is after the Speaker of Parliament, Anit Anitamong, lashed out at some of the committees accusing them of failing to perform. That just kicks us off. Shame on you, Kosasi. Last week, Parliament accountability committees were on the spot of a poor performance, forcing Parliament to instead adopt all reports of the Auditor General. We are going to adopt all the reports. To the Forum for Democratic Change National Chairman, Waswabirigwa, the performance is due to an overcrowded house and duplication of committees, which has prevented legislators from prioritizing the needs of the country. How do you really have a classroom, I'm going to call parliament as a classroom, and have five plus hundred students and one teacher and a deputy? And this is what's happening in Parliament of Uganda. I would like to see Parliament cut to the number of, let's say, half of what it is now. You realize that the same clerk who sits in at the hearing is the same who must generate a report and the same who must sit and then also has some other assignment by the office of the clerk. So the staffing in terms of a clerk, instead of having a number of MPs whom we don't even need, they should concentrate on reducing the size of parliament and having more technical people to support the, 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 the committees as they operate. Personalization of all matters and prioritizing issues that are not for a priority to the public is what FDC and the Alliance for National Transformation claim to have failed the performance of committees. Parliament being more involved in personalities, quarrels, accusations, about who married who. So it's been personalized too much. That the normal issues that we ought to be talking about that affect us as citizens are not adequately discussed. If the two are fighting and the speaker is with the mandate to expand the technical staff of the committee, if the speaker does not extend the technical man support of the committee, then that means there is no way that the committee will ever perform. We shall remain in the, in, in the cycle. So they must offer leadership and speak to each other. However, the ruling National Resistance Movement highlights the need to train legislators on how to conduct business if they are to deliver more. Parliament, in their internal systems, they should find out about the quality of training of the chairpersons, training of the members of parliament, and also giving them examples of where things have been done differently. NRM now awaits its WHIPS report 
on the performance of committees, which is expected to be taken to the Central Executive Committee to inform change. We are going to wait for the report of the government chief whip, who is the chairperson of the NRM Parliamentary Caucus. She's the one who makes recommendations to the Central Executive Committee on the designation of members of the committees. Alex Mogasha, Josephine Namakumbi, NBS, Live at 9. It is medical workers that have again ganged up against the president of Uganda Medical Association, Odongo Olendo Samuel, after he again led a delegation of medical interns uh, to the president, assuring him of their support. The angry medics have again disowned Dr. Olendo, saying he was long before expelled and are going to summon all their members to sensitize them against what they refer to as unethical tendencies of Olendo. Richard Olwen is on this one. The controversial president of the Uganda Medical Association, Dr. Sam Odong Oledo, again led a group of doctors to Kololo Air Strip to meet President Yoweri Museveni. Dr. Oledo, who was recently ejected from office, is seen making fresh pledges to the head of state as president of UMA. <laughs> Your Excellence took us over there. I think in all aspects, to our gala to go on work of over community service. Mumaria, Mumaria, and that's where your idea of some initial free service, as long as you get some basics, makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to take it up. A faction of the Federation of Uganda Medical Interns United and UMA have all distanced themselves from Oledo. Uh, the leadership of Dr. Oledo and his friends, the told medical students that they are going to discuss with the president about how, how interns can be deployed after working. And uh, to, the, to the surprise, when they reached there, it was a different scenario. They suspended him from the association for over four years. So I don't want to talk about him. Whatever he does going forward for us as doctors is not representative of us. With medics guided by key professional principles of service above anything else, fellow medics, including the former health minister, Emmanuel Otala, finds Dr. Oledo out of order. And one of the items really in the public service standing orders is that... Uh, uh, Civil servants should do as much as possible try to be apolitical. You shouldn't uh, show your political inclination. Others say the problem is beyond Dr. Oledo, saying it is the NRM agenda to politicize and penetrate all professional bodies, including doctors. When there was discontent because of the welfare quest within the profession of medicine and uh, there was industrial action. He failed to have it controlled until there was dialogue. He doesn't want people to sit at the same table with him to make negotiations. Perhaps maybe uh, they were not properly oriented that they must not publicly express their political inclination. <laughs> Richard Olwen, NBS, live at 9. The agro-processing plants that were constructed by the government to help farmers add value to their agriculture produce in Busia district have not yielded fruit. This after the district local government opted to utilize the facilities as a local revenue generation base by tendering it to private farms that have since abandoned the facilities over failure to foot electricity bills. This structure, located just a few kilometers away from Sikuda sub-county in Busia district, was constructed in the financial year 2014-2015 by government under the Community Agriculture Infrastructure Improvement Program. The agro-processing plant was basically meant to help farmers add value to their maize. But by chance, the facility cost the government over 250 million shillings 
the district technocrats allegedly went ahead to tender it out to private investor for management at 3 million shillings a year. What they are doing is to, to tender out the machine without any, any, any contribution of the sub-county or asking us is there any co community member who is willing to take the tender. Of course, as the chairman, I have the people who are interested. But one year later, the investor abandoned the facility after failing to clear power bills of over 4.2 million shillings, leaving the valuable machines to rust. Two years it is not working because of electricity. At Lunio sub-county, a similar value addition plant was constructed at a cost of 250 million shillings, was also privatized. This is ideally wrong. The purpose is value addition. The purpose is job creation. But all these can be effectively arrived at when the management is proper. The intention of government is empowering the community. Locals claim its impact hasn't been felt yet. We thought that now maybe these investors are now going to begin buying our produce from the local, from the local producers so that they can begin bring the, uh, their, our produce to the machine to, to process. But instead, we could only see these investors moving out, buying the produce from out of our sub-county, processing it from here, and after processing, they take away. I don't have even a mandate to stand here and say that my local community people are benefiting. Our attempts to speak to the district technocrats regarding the allegations of tendering the facility to private investors was futile as they asked for more time. But to the resident district commissioner, Busia, the decision was wrong. If we had the real farmers who are in the production managing this, they would appreciate the reason and the concerns as to why they should sustain. He insists the agro-processing facilities must be handed back to the farmers as planned by the government. I am moving forward to advising the management of the district to ensure that they entrust, they empower the local communities to manage these facilities. Away from these projects, there will see a series of value addition plant that cost the government over 15 billion shillings has not been used for one year now after the Ministry of Trade failed to procure a service provider to manage the facility. Failure to utilize this facility that was meant to feed Busia Central Market with, with finished goods ready for consumption has left farmers into the hands of middlemen who have continued to cheat them. The process has been a bit slow. It has taken some bit of time. Yes, it has taken some bit of time. It would have been so good, so better, if procurement of a service provider to manage the facility had been decent, de decentralized. Shamim Nabakoza, David Ocheng, NBS Live at Nine. You're still watching NBS Live at Nine. Now, the delayed completion of the Chiviro Bukunyu Road continues to arc residents of Chiviro following a failed promise from the Ministry of Works and Transport to work on the road in a period of two to three months. Despite the pressure from the locals, Hoima District local government says it has nothing to do since the matter was taken over by the Works Ministry following queries from the contractor. Kibiro Bukunyu Road is one that was meant to be rehabilitated in June 2021 with 417 million released for the cause. That was later shuttered when part of the road was washed away by the rising water of Lake Albert, which cut off several villages. We have lost so far three mothers there when we were trying to carry them because we couldn't access this LS facility. And they were trying to carry them about the escapement to come at health center. Health center for it. We are in the process of upgrading this. So Dr. DP has given us money for the construction of the maternity. But this road. After the road flooded, the 417 million that was released by government for rehabilitation was later diverted to rerouting the road. In such a hilly terrain with collapsible soils is where the NMAG Group Limited that was awarded the contract started to reroute the road, money they later say wasn't enough. did a lot of cutting and putting down. So we told them the money is finished. 
we need more money. And they told us we have no more money. They told us then we cannot continue to work when there's no money. The mission was not completed. A move that saw government terminate the contract, promising to take over and work on the road in a period of two to three months. The months have since elapsed with nothing on ground being done, a move that has troubled the locals. The last engagement we had was the Minister of uh, with the officials from the Minister of Works. They said the Minister is going to handle the road just in two, three months. We have waited but all in vain. But according to Barongo Edward, the Hoima district engineer, they have nothing to do as local government since the road was taken over by the works ministry. Contractor failed to complete the work. So the, the ministry is on that way looking for another contractor to work on the road after terminating the, the contract. Olivia Nakalembe, Cuthbert Chigozi, NBS. Live at nine. Now, for the past 37 years, the National Resistance Movement has led Uganda through the most violent and turbulent storms when it comes to Uganda's health sector. Uh, through this time, NRM has come under attack over mega funding of the health sector. According to Professor Omaswa, renowned medical expert, the NRM government deserves 80% credit for rebuilding the sector, but needs to do more when it comes to health funding and prioritization. Henry Mugenyi reports. The year 1986 is the cause that ushered in the ruling National Resistance Movement into power after overthrowing the Titokil drug government. I think this is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. By the time of state capture, Uganda's health system that was strongly built by the colonialists had slowly started limping with much of the infrastructure destroyed during the war. According to Professor Francis Omaswa, who has observed Uganda's health curve since 1986, the sector was not a priority during the first years of NRA but later became one. For a while, the NRM government, uh, they focused in maintaining regaining and maintaining peace in the country and the health sector did not become an immediate priority. So it was not until uh, about 88, 89, that's when they established the Award Commission which looked in detail into the health sector in Uganda. Professor Maswa notes that under the ruling government, Uganda's lifespan has greatly improved with better maternal health care, immunization programs, as well as the aggressive campaigns against malaria and HIV AIDS. NRM government has performed quite well compared to other countries because all the indices have improved. Life, life expectancy, infant mortality, maternal mortality. But it doesn't mean that they have achieved SDGs and also the indicators which are on our own vision 2040. We are still very far from there. Health Minister Dr. Jen Rutha Cheng recalls that during the early years of NRM government, Uganda had only one national referral hospital. To date, we have five national referral hospitals. We have five specialized hospitals handling all kinds of specialized services and we have 16 regional referral hospitals. We are able to handle cardiac conditions, we are able to handle cancers in the country and our Cancer Institute is a center of excellence for East Africa. We are able to handle the majority of the orthopedic cases. NRM takes credit for its effective handling of highly infectious diseases including Ebola, Mabag and recently COVID-19. Dr. Cheng commits to the continued investment in the health infrastructure across the country in order to achieve the goal of a modern and resilient healthcare system. And this is to ensure that the community is within between four to five kilometer reach of a health facility so that if there is any emergency, they can quickly get to a health facility. 
Uganda's health budget has for long dwindled between 5% to 8.5% and this does not allow the sector to offer the desired services. Health sector budget has remained fairly static. When I was uh, director general, we were spending, uh, like uh, as a, a country as a whole, about 60, 65 dollars per capita. We are now around 40, 36, 40 per capita. And that is a big problem. We need to mobilize additional resources uh, for health. 75% of our disease burden is communicable diseases. They consume a lot of funding that is sent to the health sector. And so we still need to emphasize prevention to address the 75% disease burden that is preventable. But we also need to focus a lot on the non-communicable diseases that are now on the rise together with the road traffic accidents that take a lot of our budget. Uganda's health system has both private and government funded facilities all regulated by the government. As of today, Uganda has 48 general hospitals, 16 regional referral hospitals, five specialized hospitals, and five national referral hospitals, with many in need of a facelift and machinery upgrade. Some are in a very bad state, but over the years, many of them have been receiving resources to facelift the hospital. Nearly all of them have been receiving resources. Uh, some of the very uh, bad hospitals include uh, Masindi, Kambuga, Bujiri, Apach, and many others. In Vision 2040, Uganda desires to have access to affordable and quality health care and education services. Ugandans aspire for health, literate, and well-informed society. Henry Mugenyi, NBS, live at 9. Ladies and gentlemen, don't ask me why I'm smiling. <laughs> the elephant is still on the tree. Let's go for a break. <laughs> The most affordable 4G smartphone in Uganda from Airtel. Now heavily discounted from 250,000 shillings to 150,000 shillings only. Yes, 150,000 shillings only to keep you connected to your loved ones. Dell Star 175 Star 94 Hash to activate free 1GB instantly and 100% double data on all weekly and monthly battles for three months. Get one today while stock lasts from the nearest Airtel shop. With Airtel, the smartphone network. Introducing the Prime Learn app. You can now top up each other's classwork using Prime Learn. Get access to elaborate lesson videos, exercises, and revision tests by expert teachers all over the country. From nursery to primary seven, all subjects and learning areas affordably based on the Uganda curriculum. Download the PrimeLearn app from Play Store or visit www.prime-learn.com. Learn ahead of others, anytime, anywhere. Set to run a sport to the wrong person. Here's how to reverse it with MTN Mobile Money. Dial star 165 hash. Select My Account. Select Initiate Reversal. You will see your last three transactions. Select the transaction you want to reverse. Enter your mobile money PIN and you'll get an SMS confirmation that the transaction has been blocked from being withdrawn. And that's it. Please note, only transactions that haven't been withdrawn can be reversed. You built a great business. Apsage kuyambo kusesa hum. Buying a Mercedes, Toyota or Range Rover. Let Wild Navy make your dream car a reality by importing it directly from Japan. We offer cash and Stanley Bank direct import financing of up to 80%, meaning you can secure your dream car with only a 20% deposit. We offer free pre-shipping car service, accident-free and mileage certificates for your peace of mind. Find us at Forest Mall Ugogo, Block A, Ground Floor, or call 0704-105-159. World Navy. Drive luxury. <laughs> 
doesn't matter where we are. We bring it wherever we go because space doesn't determine our expression. Our moments are golden, timeless. And enjoyed in Pola and Pola. Because in Pola Enjoyments is about our crew, our vibe, and our beer. Bell Lager. Fresh vibes and Pola Enjoyments. Africa One Tours and Travel has organized a senior citizens tour to the Holy Land of Egypt and Israel from the 27th of March to the 8th of April 2023. The sites to be visited include Mount Sinai, River Jordan, Mount of Olives, Wailing Walls, the Red Sea, Sea of Galilee, Bethlehem, Nazareth, Dead Sea, Mount of Temptation, the Way of the Cross, Golgotha, and Jesus' Tomb. The trip is an all-inclusive return air ticket, five-star full board accommodation, travel insurance, visa fees and meals, entrance to all sites. Send your parent, grandparent, or senior citizen of your choice by booking with Africa One Tours and Travel. Or come to our offices, second floor, Catherine House, Muyenga Tanki Road. Africa One Tours and Travel. Let the senior citizens walk in the foots of Jesus. Thank you. Hello, Eric. Come and see my new home. Are you looking for the best quality paint for your dream home? Be part of the new revolution with our Global Paint Silk Vinyl that gives you beautiful, shining interior walls as weather coat gives you never fading and strongly guarded walls against bad weather conditions. To us painters, Global Paints, weather coat and Global Paints, Silk Vinyl. Is our choice. Located along Bandachureka Ginger Highway and Namav Industrial Park, Global Paints, a reliable product. More to come, brought to you by Make Your Building a Paradise. We have weather coat emulsion, undercoat emulsion, silk vinyl emulsion, flat emulsion, super gloss, and high gloss. Global Paint, a reliable product. In still to come, High Court judge and tour operators in Bitterau over Itanda Falls charges. These ones are complaining, be like the other good rafters. They are paying 150 per month. I'm very sad. I've been struggling. We've been struggling for a long time. More to come. Brought to you by Make Your Building a Paradise. We have weather coat emulsion, undercoat emulsion, silk vinyl emulsion, flat emulsion, super gloss, and high gloss. Global Paint, a reliable product. Well, I'll still remind you to check on www.nowpost.co.ug for the stories that haven't run in the segments that have gone by. Now, the U.S. Ambassador to Uganda, Natalie Brown, has asked Ugandans to have who have benefited from the U.S. Department of State Exchange programs to use the experience networks as well to positively impact local communities. The ambassador who was officiating at the U.S. Mission Uganda Alumni Impact Awards in Kampala says the United States government relies on such beneficiaries to bridge relations between Uganda and the United States. In the last 60 years, over 4,700 Ugandans have benefited from the U.S. government-supported exchange programs 
right from the first Ugandan Fulbright scholar to study in the United States in the 1950s to the cohort of 2022 Mandela Washington Fellows under the Young African Leaders Initiative alumni of USA. Ugandans have over the years been trained in business, academia, education, public management, civil society, arts, medicine, public health, and media, among other areas. Where the United States government spends so much, uh, invests so much in sending Ugandans to the United States. But while officiating at the U.S. Mission Uganda Alumni Impact Awards in Kampala, the U.S. Ambassador to Uganda, Natalie Brown, says it's high time for Ugandans who have benefited from the U.S. state exchange programs to consider using the experience networks to impact on society. But also your interest in community and ability and willingness to give back. And this is one area where I can claim a lot of credit on behalf of the many diplomats and the local staff who've worked at our embassy for years. They absolutely choose well. I mean, just look at this room uh, and just look at all the accomplishments that you've had since returning from your programs. You not only succeeded in your respective areas, but you also brought your communities and the next generation up with you. The ambassador also noted that U.S. invests in these programs so as to bring the two countries together. These new interactions, according to Natalie Brown, can lead to new opportunities in addition to having a deeper understanding of the two countries. We invest in these programs to bring our countries closer together. We hope that by connecting you to Americans and American-style training through our exchanges, you'll have a deeper understanding of our country and have the opportunity to share, with Uganda, to share Uganda with the people you meet in the United States. The U.S. ambassador, who underscored the importance of the U.S. government investing in people, also noted that the exchange program's focus has been on software being the critical system that keep organizations and institutions running. We believe in, in investing in people. Or as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, uh, Linda Thomas Greensfield explained to a small group of alumni when she came in last August, we focus on software. I to. She said that I Some of the personalities that scoped the U.S. Mission Uganda Alumni Impact Award include Margaret Sekaja, who scooped the Dorothy Golombi Lifetime Achievement Award, engineer by Nomgisha, who scooped the Innovation, Information and Communication Technology Award, Dr. Ethedra Nachimuli, who bagged the Health Award, among others. <laughs> Shamim Nabakosa, Sam Ivandam Gabi, NBS, live at nine. <laughs> District leaders in uh, Naka Piripiri warned that more government interventions aimed at improving the livelihood of Karamajongs are bound to fail if the government continues to choose what they consider suitable for them. But the State Minister for Karamoja Affairs, Agnes Nandutu, says the leaders ought to encourage locals to embrace agriculture, warning that the government is tired of supplying relief food to the people who have hands to work. Over the years, the government has put several interventions in place to improve the livelihoods of Karamojongs. These include livestock, agriculture and goat rearing among others, all aimed at eradicating poverty in the region. But despite these interventions, poverty remains rampant with district leaders, faulting government over projects they deem unfit for the residents. Nanira joined the Nakapiripiti district chairman, wonders why government selects enterprises for them, warning that they will continue failing. There is an assumption that the youth need this. By the time you put the youth, the youth have not really put their interest there. And they receive their assistance and go with it. So it is important to prepare somebody to be willing. They grow sorghum, they grow maize, they grow sunflower, some areas grow simsimu, and those are the seeds that we are focusing on. But we are saying, no, we can also get other things. You know, when you study, we have studied about debts. They do well in dry lands, and they can do well here. However, the State Minister for Karamoja Affairs, Agnes Nandutu, had leaders to encourage their people to embrace agriculture to increase food production. We are tired of bringing food relief to Karamoja. We are tired of hearing famine in Karamoja. That's why we have embarked on a number of, of programs. First and foremost is food production for both home consumption and 
for, for commercial purposes. According to government, a number of projects are lined up for the people of Karamoja that include the distribution of galagos per household, iron sheets to get rid of grass thatched houses, and tractors for each district for agriculture mechanization, among others. We are putting our energies in Karamoja such that Karamoja can be known for wealth. Karamoja can be known for its minerals the mineral economy. Karamoja can be known for its livestock. So we look forward to uh, more allocation of tractors because with now mechanization, I think production will go high. And given that this is a green belt. The government maintains that if Karamojongs want to benefit from more development programs and also attract investors in their region, they need to embrace peace against gun violence. Victor Tayebwa, Alan Mwesigwa, NBS. Live at nine. Now, Gorilla War veteran Colonel Fred Mwesija says that the 1986 war was the best option at the time since an insurrection would cause more death and a coup was no option given the weak military wear to help NRA defeat the government of the day. Mildred Tohaisa spoke to one of the 27 original Gorilla fighters. Assigned a number RO0027, Colonel Fred Mwesije joins me right now. And I would like to ask Colonel Fred, how long did it take you to plan for this guerrilla war, which took you a full-blown five years? Launching with the guerrilla war was, uh, it had a scientific plan. There were leaders, core leaders, who were doing the planning, uh, headed by President Yoweri Museven now and the Ria Kategayas and others. Most of us were young soldiers, so we would receive guidance after the planning of our leaders. Well, at what point in time did you receive instructions to join the guerrilla war? When we came from, from the training and we were not deployed, and we saw the chaos in, 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 in the campaigns, and we saw the chaos in the government, and we saw what was happening, we saw the killings of these of Ugandans. That alone triggered me really to be more determined. I even mobilized the other colleagues whom we had come from with from Chuba. So we, 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 we found ourselves in a group of others. I don't remember that President said, Musi, you come. But earlier on, I myself and uh, General Eric Tumwine had been sent to uh, wreck or to spy on Masindi. So we, we, we had two alternatives, either Masindi or Kabamba. One would ask, of all places that you would attack, why did you choose Kabamba? Uh, after Idamin overthrow, we were reorganized. Still two groups. Uh, from NASA group was uh, camped in Kabamba. Chikosi Malum, Vende. Okay? We were not reintegrated, so our divisions were still there. So we were told we were disarmed and put our guns where? In Kabamba. So we had uh, that determination to acquire the guns to assist us to, to fight the, the, the God of Warfare. Because we didn't have guns, we, we left only with 27 guns, and we thought we would get our guns back from, from Kabamba, which we tried. And uh, uh, if I can remember, when we were put in, uh, in sections uh, that morning of 6th, I was in the front section to go in the small car. We had the truck of Tire, then we had the small car of Little Yondo, the father of Little Mumba. So I was in that car with Little Magara, with Little Ndayondi, with Little Chuba, Suicide, Katunji. We were about seven of us. Why was Masindi part of those targeted points? Kabamba, Masindi, they were mostly the, the training wings, and uh, uh, we had some elements there uh, within the Masindi barracks. So we, we knew Masindi barracks was a bit friendly, like Kabamba was friendly. So we wanted soft targets, not uh, the, the hard ones. And kind of read message, out of the five years, what are some of your memories of this guerrilla war? It, it is a bit strange. The nearness to fight a government in Kampala, to fight within short, short distance from the, and we stayed there until the capture of power. Is that one, you should also take it as a, 
as uh, something that is unforgettable. How did we survive within Matuga, which is about 20 kilometers from Kampala? Okay? But if I remember really how a group of 27 armed men attacking a barracks of 4,000 soldiers and overrunning it, and these guys fled as far as their legs could carry them, okay? Then how does a gorilla unit, a gorilla group, move from Kabamba to Chenjojo, to Kagadi, Kakumiro, Chiboga, and detected by government forces? Of course, that corporal also who made us um, unable to capture the, the Amra, uh, I think he was a hero. If we had captured those guns, okay, maybe the luggage would have been too heavy and would have been unable to carry the whole luggage and they would have tried to defend the, 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 the guns and would have been eliminated. And maybe even if we had managed to hide the, the guns in some rules, then the army would come and really cause uh, chaos, would kill the, the people in the area. So to me, I think it was really a blessing in this guys, we didn't know, not to, to, to go with the heavy, heavy luggage of, of guns. Then, of course, staying in the bush without any cover, without uh, proper f food, rain, sunshine, calm, we were ready for to stand with those uh, hazards. But what is also very important was the determination of the fighters, the determination of the population to support us. It took a full five years, but I know there were those last days before you officially captured Kampala. What do you remember of those last few days in the bush? When we were we surrounded the massacre for about almost three months, until they surrendered without a fight. Then we went and attacked Katonga. These all fighting forces, all the units, there was UNLE, Rescue Front, FUNA, FEDEMO, UFM, all these groups I've told you, they all ganged up and became one force to fight NRA, and we defeated them at Katonga. When we defeated them at Katonga, we moved towards now Kampala. When we reached Mpiji, the surrounding forces, those forces which were now surrendering and coming to join us, became too many. And I'm telling you, we couldn't hold them until the president had to appoint me uh, to take charge of all those uh, surrendering forces. I started re reorganizing them and uh, teaching them uh, uh, the, of, the ideology of NRA. And, uh, we continued until we captured Kampala. You had other options. You could have chosen an insurrection, you could have chosen a coup, but you said for the part of the insurrection you feared that you would lose more people. Do you think in the guerrilla war there were less lives lost than if you had probably chosen an insurrection? The guerrilla option was the best option and it saved lives and it opened the eyes of Uganda because during the guerrilla warfare, it's not that we are doing the fighting every day, Mildred. Most of the time, we spent the time educating the Wananchi, sensitizing the Wananchi about the evils of the previous regimes, okay, and how to overcome the, those uh, uh, evils of those governments. So we emphasized total transformation, peace building, uh, anti-tribalism. We really preached the peace, good governance, democracy, uh, social and economic transformation. So we were really, we had time to educate our Ugandans and you see that even the quality of people in Rwanda at that time was really uh, better quality than other parts which we had not uh, liberated. And we had wanted that maybe if the Gore of had taken all but spread to all parts of Uganda, maybe we would have a better country right now. 
the NRM has chosen, and I'll read verbatim the theme for this year's celebration, which is our tireless efforts to transform Uganda is the promise we cannot afford to fail. Looking at this particular theme, do you think NRM has lived up to its principles that you espoused while still in the bush? Uh, right now, you see it from the time of NASA, NRA, NRM, UPDF, we have tried to live by our core principles. Feel the Lord, patriotism, love for Uganda, democracy, good governance, social and economic transformation, uh, pan-Africanism. Um, we've tried. You have tried, meaning that there's some aspects where you've failed. Where is that and how have you let down Ugandans? You see, Mildred, you should also appreciate that uh, NRM, the, the 30 years plus of NRM, have not all been dedicated to building a nation. The, most of the 10, 15 years, NRM was fighting against insurgencies, against insurrection in the north. If the efforts that were put in that uh, fighting the rebels, you know, there are about 11 rebel groups that have actually tried to disorganize NRM, and they have all been defeated, including ADF. So you see that, to me, I believe if we had all our sources, if we didn't have this uh, case of Ugandans trying to overthrow government, if all the resources had been put on building the Uganda, on building the economy, would be very far. Can I message what do you think NRM can do better? NRM has always done better and will continue to do better. We shall maintain the peace. We shall maintain uh, uh, patriotic ideology, nationalistic ideology, uh, pan-African ideology. Uh, we shall maintain all those uh, correct line, military line, political line, and social and economic tr transformation. So we shall continue really to, to build peace because peace is the foundation for transformation. Are you proud to be a part of this NRM of the current times? I'm very, very proud to belong to NRM, although in any system, in any society, definitely, you cannot say it's 100% perfect. And we are trying, if there are any imperfections, we shall continue to struggle. It's a process, it's a journey. We shall continue to uh, solve those imperfections. Thank you so much. We get back to the Political Command Center. Sabay leaders have endorsed General Muhozi Kinergara for presidency in 2026. Uh, they appreciated President Museveni for his contribution to the region. Muhozi spent the weekend in the Sabay and Bugisi sub regions where he engaged in a number of social activities to touch base with the local community on an environmental protection campaign. General Muhozi Kinergara camped in the Elgon region this weekend to touch base with his supporters. He began his tour in Sabay, where he was welcomed by area leaders at Kapchora District Headquarter. <laughs> he later proceeded to Boma Grounds in Kapchora Municipality to meet waiting crowds that braved the sun to have a glimpse of him. <laughs> leaders from the three districts, including Kapchora, Kwen and Buko, converged at the venue to welcome the general. <laughs> Athletic world champion Moses Kipsiro appreciated President Yerim Seveni for the tremendous infrastructure development, including the Tariat High Altitude Training Center. And um, we thank him also for the road of Pukwa. It is really a wonderful road. Kipsiro and other leaders, however, said it is high time the president paved way for General Mhozi to accomplish his mission. We need now our standby generator. That's none other than MK himself. We want you to take over the seat, at least for 10 years. Mose expressed his gratitude to the people of Sebei for overwhelmingly voting for President Museveni over the decades. I want to thank the people of Sebei for their love and devotion to our leader, our president, President Museveni. 
On Sunday morning, he joined Christians at St. Andrew's Cathedral Mbale, where he attended prayers. St. Andrew's Cathedral, welcome so much. And this is home. For FDC's Northern Division MP aspirant, Paul Wanyoto, pledged to support General Mhozi if he bids for the presidency in 2026. The general is done with his tour of duty in the army. Should he choose, like he may, to run the course of the presidency, I pledge to support him. General Mhozi promised to return to Mbali to engage with the people at a later time. We, I promise that we're going to come again to have a proper, proper rally here in Mbali. And have a good, good, good uh, day-long engagement with, uh, with the people. Kanari Mgume, Jared Matembu, NBS, live at 9. Today is a good day. to draw up a new plan.